my name is uh, Blake Clark, and uh, like a lot of comics, I come from a tough neighborhood, Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was in the Army, which is kind of like being in the, in the Boy Scouts, only the Boy Scouts have adult leadership. So. <laughs> now, I don't know if anybody's been in the Army, but see, in the Army, they gear everything about an IQ of 14, so guys like me can keep up, see? Now, you guys, you guys are bright. You've been to enough war movies, right? You know how a hand grenade works. I swear, this is, I'm not making this up, this is true. In Vietnam, in combat, printed on the hand grenades, it had pull pin, throw away. Like, <laughs> like really, like some guy's gonna go, oh, I'll keep this one here. <laughs> we were a little bit brighter than that. This is true, we had these Claymore mines, they were anti-personnel mines, they were shaped like this, and they blew steel balls out one direction, and we put them out in front of our positions at night. And guys were always getting them turned around the wrong way and parting hair in 15 or 20 different places. <laughs> so the army, to alleviate this, they put front on the front. But this wasn't enough for the army. They had to explain that. It said front toward enemy. <laughs> okay, I understand now. Front toward enemy, I understand. On the back, and I'm not making this up, on the back it had do not eat. <laughs> Now, I'm no road scholar, okay, but I pretty well know I don't eat landmines. That's something I know. My mom taught me that when I was a little guy, and I remembered it. I didn't need it written down to remind me. But having eaten sea rations for a year, I could understand why someone would be tempted to eat landmines, because sea rations didn't come from any of the five basic food groups. And <laughs> the worst was the coffee. It was this powder stuff. It came in these little packets, but we'd drink it, because we didn't have anything else to keep us awake over there at night. And we were, we were on the lay ocean water. <laughs> We were on the lay ocean border, and stuff was happening every day then. I mean, we were scared. And I'd had like 15 cups of that coffee, and I was wired, man. I had my M16. I, was... <laughs> I heard a twig snap behind me. I went, whoa! It was Robert Young. He said, Blake, why so tense? And... <laughs> this guy gets around. Let's see, everybody's idea of, of war is like Hollywood's idea of war. Right? If you saw Apocalypse Now, they said this was supposed to be the most realistic Vietnam War movie. <laughs> yeah, right. And first of all, it shows these choppers, you know, with music playing. Da -da 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 -da. First of all, if we had music playing in the choppers, it would be like to do to do to do to do. <laughs> and then, and then it shows this Robert Duvall character, you know, the macho guy with the cavalry hat. Shows him marching around at attention on a battlefield during a firefight. That's going to happen real soon, folks. Okay? I mean, this <laughs> happens all. I mean, mortar rounds are bursting, artillery's incoming, rounds are whizzing by, they're napalming the jungle, choppers are crashing. This guy isn't even flinching. We had names for guys like that. Killed in action. <laughs> you get real, get real small when that's not bad. But the guy, he was sick anyway. He says, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Now, I can think of a lot of things I like to smell in the morning, but napalm isn't one of them. Okay? <laughs> After a year in the jungle, I like the smell of a woman in the morning, okay? That's the smell of victory. <laughs> and then the movie goes totally crazy. It shows everybody in the whole country stoned. That's the only realistic thing in the whole movie, because... <laughs> no, the drugs over there were a real problem. We were on the DMZ, that's the militarized zone one night. Got a call on the radio like this, it was... Hey, um... <laughs> Lieutenant, we got movement in the bushes, man. <laughs> so I said, well, what is it? And they go... It looks like a giant chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> I slept real well that night, I did, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually hesitant to admit that I'm a Vietnam vet because, you know, like the guys in World War II, when they came back to America, they got ticker tape parades in New York. We came back from Vietnam, we didn't get any heroes welcome. People spit on us and called us names. That's true. I flew into Atlanta, Georgia on my way home to Macon, where I'm from. I've been in Vietnam a year fighting for my country. Got off the plane, I was walking through the airport there, and this guy came up and called me a warmonger and a murderer. First American I see calls me a warmonger and a murderer. So I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I know, I overreacted, I overreacted, but I went with the heat of the moment. And I'd say, it was tough, it was scary. You carried a loaded weapon with you everywhere you went, you were always scared, but I moved from Georgia. <laughs> so I got out of there. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles now, which is, which is okay. But, you know, that when I flew in to Los Angeles, I flew, the first thing I see when I get off the plane there, all these Hare Krishnas running around. You guys know what Hare Krishna? All these people that made ugliness a religion, right? Okay? <laughs> these guys. And, they, you know, they let them roam free in the airports in Los Angeles. They don't see... They have Hare Krishnas in Georgia. 
But see, they know how to treat them there. They keep them corralled up over by the men's room. They do in the Atlanta <laughs> airport. You ever been in there? They do it. They got a wooden sign, a wooden fence around them. A sign over says, "Hey, we don't agree with a dang thing these bald-headed geeks are saying." All right? <laughs> but the federal government said we got to let them in here. So here they are. A bunch of ugly suckers, ain't they? And they leave them, they make them stay back then. So, see, Southern people, know, if you're ever driving through the South, if you ever go on a trip to America and you go through the South and you get lost, don't stop and ask directions, okay? Because you always get the same guy. They clone this guy and they send him around to every filling station in the South. His name's always Billy Bob, Jim Ed, Bubba Skeeter. That's the Bubba belt through there, see? And in fact, if you get lost, you pull into the filling station, ask the guy his name. If he's got two first names, leave. That's the first name. Nice I mean, it's always like, you ask him a simple question, like, excuse me, sir, could you tell me how to get to Interstate 75? He'll come up with a brilliant observation. Well, you ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> Nothing escapes me. I saw this. This is true. I saw this. A guy, he was kind of effeminate. He had Illinois tags on his car. That's two strikes against you in the South right there. He pulls in, he goes, excuse me, sir, could you tell me how to get back on Interstate 75? The guy freaked out. He went, get back on it. You mean you was on it, you got off it, and you lost it? <laughs> you guys have been great. Thanks a lot. Thank you.